Hello students, welcome back to the course on labor welfare and industrial relations. We move to the fifth lecture, the last lecture of module 8, where we look into the five-year plans and workers' education. So if you recollect over the entire last four lectures in this particular module, we have looked into child protection, the importance of that, the relevance of that specifically, the different laws, different acts, different amendments, the different boards, different organizations that have come up and we tend to extend it today with, uh, you know, tracing the route from 1947, whereby we'll discuss what were the, the significance or significant factors associated with five-year plans and workers' education and what is the present status or what are the relevant associations or organizations or laws or uh, boards that exist today for the same. I'm Dr. Abraham Sirlaisak. I'm a faculty at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So when we look into the five-year plans and workers' educations, we have to start from the scratch. India adopted the policy of economic planning specifically after uh, the independence in 1947. So when you look into the independence and the workers' education, it almost started, you know, simultaneously. When you look into the, the workers' education specifically, it was included from the second five-year plan onwards, which is around 56 to 1961. So initially, a sum of rupees 50 lakhs was allotted for the workers' education scheme in that plan. So, uh, the country had initially itself taken or uh, looked into the criticality of uh, workers' education or the relevance of that associated with the developed India. So, considering that fact, it has taken up the initiative, maybe in a, in a very small scale, but considering the economic scenario during the early uh, 50s, the rupees 50 lakhs as part of the second year, the second plan was sort of a generous amount. The third plan disbursed a sum of rupees 2 crores for the large scale expansion of the workers' education. Now, the fourth plan recommended the expansion of the CBWE. In the last lecture, if you recollect, we have seen that it has undergone a change in its name. Uh, the CBWE scheme to cover more workers, including those in smaller undertakings and rupees. 4.6 crores was set aside for the scheme specifically. When we trace back to the fifth plan, recommended that 20,000 worker teachers and 10 lakh workers to be trained under the workers' education program by activating existing, existing regional centers and opening new ones wherever it was deemed necessary. So, CBWE and now the DT and DBWED CBWE had set up 40 regional centers by the year ending 1978. It had trained 456 education officers, almost 46,000 plus worker teachers at the regional levels and almost 33.55 lakhs workers at the unit level. Now, when you look into the present status specifically, planning commission is not relevant these days. It is the Niti Aayog that has taken up its place and Niti Aayog and workers' education has been, has taken a different turn altogether. On January 1, 2015, a cabinet resolution was passed to replace the planning commission with the newly formed Niti Aayog, National Institution for Transforming India. Now, since 2015, the workers' education is dealt under the skill development and the employment division of Niti Aayog. Now, when you look into the Niti Aayog and workers' education, there are different aspects that the organization does. The first one, it identifies as well as it offers solutions to critical issues concerning employment, concerning jobs, and livelihood creation. The division also provides advice and policy guidance to key stakeholders involved in skill development, employee generation, and social welfare. Now, when you look into the existence and the relevance of Niti Ayo, it engages with Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, MSDE, and the Ministry of Labor Employment, MOLE, in formulating policy initiatives and reforms related to skill development, apprenticeships, and employment issues. It also develops briefs on labor market, female labor force participation, employment, and unemployment data. It also collaborates with research organizations and development partners for research studies and development initiatives in the area of skill development and 
livelihood generation. So when you look into uh, the replacement of planning commission by Niti Aayog, these are some of the very critical aspects with Niti Aayog. The National Institution for Transforming India has taken up and is doing systematically from 2015. Now, when you look into the projects under the Skill Development and Employment Divisions of Division, what we discussed previously, the first and the foremost aspect is strengthening the apprenticeship system in India. Now, this is something which will enable a lot of organizations to utilize the existing manpower in a greater and more efficient way. Now, it also provides the apprentice or the people who want to work, the people to gain sufficient work experience or sufficient know-how, sufficient understanding about the jobs or the specializations they want to be in. Another important aspect is district skill development planning for advancing skill development. This happens on a, on a district basis and on a very unit level basis which enhances the planning and advancing skill programs. The another aspect, the third one is tracking progress of skill development. It's not about just imparting skill development. It is also about tracking the progress of the skill development that has happened. Now, on the fourth turn, you have advancing construction skills training in aspirational districts in collaborations with large-scale organizations like Atlantic Constructions. There are other important projects under the skill development mission like engaging with Ministry of Labor and Employment for setting up a portal for unorganized and migrant workers. This will ensure that people who are otherwise unemployed who are not coming under the, the organized sector is also readily available in the database and if need be they can be employed very quickly without any delay without any objection study on overcoming barriers and enhancing female labor force participation is yet another important thing we do understand that there is an inherent disadvantage that the female workforce is facing not only the glass ceiling, but also the very initiation or the very possibility of working in an organization is sometimes elusive to the fairer sex. So this is where you actually need study on overcoming barriers and enhancing female labor force participation. Another critical aspect is analysis of district skill plans because again as I have mentioned as we track the progress of the skill development we also have to analyze what are the outcomes or are the district skill plans giving the required outcomes that are otherwise you know uh, going unmonitored. Another important uh, project under the skill development and employment division is the integration of Unnadi portal with state employment data, Unadi portal helps Indian workers to find jobs across employers all over the country. So this happens to be a sort of a job search engine which gives a ready reference, a ready recorder to where all jobs are available. And if you are talented enough, if your skill set matches the required job, there is no stopping you. So this gives you a open setup or a open platform whereby people who are talented are not being hindered or there are no artificial barriers or no, there are no glass ceilings that are controlling them or that are stopping them from going and fetching or getting the required employment. Study on gig and platform economy is also part of the, one of the projects under the skill development and employment division. It is also to keep updated, keep focused in the changing economic and the socio status of the world altogether and the employment scenario in across the globe altogether. Another important aspect of the project would be study on convergence of skilling schemes. And finally, it is not an exhaustive list, but if you understand consultation of digital apprenticeship, we started with, with, with the possibility of apprenticeship in India and this is where the projects of skill development mission and employment division hover around. Now, when you're looking into schemes related to workers' education, there are a couple of them which I would like to discuss today. And the first and the foremost one is the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, PMKY. The flagship scheme, the flagship scheme of the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, MSDE, was implemented by the National Skill Development Corporation, NSDC. It will be implemented between 2022 and 26. So we are seeing the implementing pattern right now with a strong emphasis on making the program 
candidate centric by creating an enabling ecosystem to meet the aspirations and encouraging sectoral needs so there are workforce on one side there are possibilities that are being generated by different sectors different organizations on the other side this particular Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana does the matching and tries to map people towards the required job or the required job will map the people who are directly skilled towards that particular job or will make them ready towards that particular job. So it offers three types of training basically one is short term training, second is a recognition of prior learning whatever they have done and specifically special projects. So what are the different objectives of Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Vikas Yojana? Very quickly it promotes an enabling ecosystem. So when you are looking into the entire scheme of things, we will see that the intent was there before also. But as the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana has come up, it has strived to create, it has attempted to create an enabling ecosystem for youths to get skilled and choose a career path of their desire. To create a platform for both demand and supply side by making the existing skilling ecosystem more flexible swift and geared to meet the emerging demand. So this is where I would say the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana is correctly hitting the target. It is not only by showcasing the intent, it is by creating the flexible ecosystem both at the demand and supply side. It is not biased, it is not lopsided, moreover it is well balanced in its objectives. To effectively meet the demand and supply through a process overhauling by promoting technology driven ecosystems. Now this is also very critical when it comes to the development in today's world. Technology driven ecosystem, innovative financing and not to forget the digitalization that the country is seeing today. There are another aspect, there are other aspects like the NAPS, National Apprenticeship Promotion Schemes that comes under the scheme of Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. So it promotes apprenticeship training as, as is a functional word in the country as per the scheme government of india shares 25 percent of the prescribed stipend subject to a maximum of rupees 1500 per month per apprentice with the employers now this will be a big relief to the employers because the government is initiating the process the government is helping them to take the financial burden at least a part of it at least one fourth of it so government of india will also share maximum rupees 7500 per fresher apprentice without any formal trade training as a cost of basic training with the basic training provider. So this is also relevant when you are looking into the apprentice, what is lacking would be the initial training. Now if government of India is taking care of that, it is a huge relief for the employers. State apprenticeship advisors, SAA and regional direct race of apprenticeship, RDATs, will act as implementing agencies in their respective state and regions. Now when you look into these schemes, there are also National Career Service NCS project. It was envisioned for transforming the National Employment Service to provide various employment related services such as job matching, career counseling, vocational guidance, information on skill development courses, apprenticeships, internships, etc through online portal. So this initiates the reachability and this makes people equipped to apply for the required apprenticeship or job whichever is there. It is one stop solution to provide various services related to employment and career related services to the citizens of the country. So this program is implemented by the DGE, Directorate General of Employment, Ministry of Labor and Employment. So what are the objectives of National Career Service Portal? The first one, to enhance career and employment opportunities in various sectors, undoubtedly. Two, to provide counseling and guidance for career development initiatives. Three, increased Focus on decent employment opportunities, not about only providing employment opportunity. It is more than that. It is giving them the required conducive environment. It is giving them the decent employment opportunities to maintain a steadfast level of financial stability, maintain a great level of integrity. Fourth, increasing 
the participation of the female labor workforce in the work in female labor force in the workforce so this has been elusive for india for quite some decades now but now it has regained the momentum increasing the participation of female labor workforce or labor force in the workforce and finally providing encouraging entrepreneurial endeavors to emerging businesses now Yet another important and more critical uh, scheme is the Deen Dayal Upadhyay Grameen Kaushal Yojana, which we easily know as DDU GKY. So, Deen Dayal Upadhyay Grameen Kaushal Yojana again aims to provide the rural youth who are poor and provide them with jobs having a regular monthly wages or above the minimum wages as the need should be. It's an initiative of the Ministry of Rural Development. Government of India that seeks to promote rural livelihoods. It's a part of National Rural Livelihood Mission, NRLM, the mission for poverty reduction called Ajivika. And finally, the scheme will benefit more than 55 million poor rural youth who are ready to be skilled by providing sustainable employment. So, when you are looking into schemes like Deen Dayal Upadhyay Grameen Kaushal Yojana, DDU GKY, what we see is that these schemes are not class schemes. These are mass schemes. These are schemes to actually bring employment towards a lot of people. It is not a token scheme. It is not a scheme that has that is just for the purpose of showcasing. It is to encourage people to get into employment. It is to encourage people in large numbers to get into employment and skill themselves up and get into the right employment. So this is where DDU, GKY or, or schemes like that takes the upper seat. And what are the objectives? It provides awareness building within the community on opportunities. So when you look into DDU, GKY objectives, it provides awareness building within the community on the opportunities. So what are the opportunities existing on a day-to-day -day basis? That gets a clarity. That gets unraveled here. Identifying rural youth who are poor. Now, many a time this happens that people in the urban sector, generally there's a migration that's happening from rural and urban. And some or the other way, people from uh, rural sector who are there in the urban area will get some employment. Maybe it is an, an unorganized sector. But the, the fact is that they are employed to some extent. But many a time, Several times, the rural youth are ignored. They are not getting the right opportunity. They are not getting the right portals or platforms whereby they can actually apply for that particular job. There are no industries. There are no schemes, no factories, no workshops. So where do they go? So this is as an, an initiative, an object, and a yojana whereby actually people can look into or get things or get opportunities whereby they can convert it into employment, specifically the, the rural youth. Mobilizing rural youth who are interested is one of the key objectives of DDU GKY. Now, counseling of youth and parents selection is based on aptitude, imparting knowledge, industry link skills and attitude that enhances the employability of the individuals. And finally, supporting the person so employed for sustainability after placement. So we have extensively discussed about empowerment and sustainability in the previous lecture, if you remember. So this is an extension of that. The DDU GKY uh, Yojana is an extension of that whereby they are trying to identify the rural youth and trying to give employment or facilitate employment to them. Another important aspect is the Rural Self-Employment Training Institutes, which are also called as RSETIs, Rural Self-Employment Training Institutes. If you see the functional word, it's rural, but it's self-employment that is being initiated. So when you are looking into the RSETIs, they are managed by banks with active cooperation from the government of India and the state government. They ensure necessary skill training and skill upgradation of the rural BPL youth, the below poverty line youth to mitigate the unemployment problem. So the Rural Self-Employment Training Institute concept is based on the Rural Development and Self-Employment Training Institute, a society established jointly by three agencies, if you know this, 
by Syndicate Bank, Canra Bank and Sri Manjudeshwara Trust based on Ujjayar in Karnataka. They came together to establish this Rural Development and Self-Employment Training Institute and on the basis of that, the Government of India has modified it and brought out the Rural Self-Employment Training Institute, RSETI. So one RSETI is established in every district of the country. Concern is the lead bank in the district that takes responsibility for creating and managing it. So GI Government of India will provide one-time grant assistance up to a maximum of rupees 1 crore for meeting the expenditure on construction of building and other infrastructure. So after successful completion of the training, they will provide uh, the credit linkage assistance by the banks to start their own entrepreneurial venture. So rural self-employment training institutes are mushrooming. They are actually coming up as platforms whereby the entrepreneur ventures of individuals who otherwise could just have dreamt about these things would not have realized or do not see the potential in realizing can actually realize their own company can actually understand that one day they can build their own business conglomerate or business empire if you look into the program structure and contents of RCTI each RCTI offers 30 to 40 skill development programs in FY in various avenues and the programs are of short duration anywhere ranging from one to six weeks and could fall into categories like agriculture programs, agriculture and allied activities like dairy, poultry, apiculture, horticulture, sericulture, mushroom cultivation, floriculture,s fisheries, etc. Maybe product programs like dress designing for men and women, rexin articles, incense sticks manufacturing, football making, bag, bakery products, leaf cup making, recycled paper manufacturing. So these are different, different categories whereby this, the, the, the training program is being provided. Process programs are there where two-wheeler repairs are being taught, radio TV repairs, electrical transformer repairs, irrigation pump set repairs, tractor and power tiller repairs, cell phone repairs, beautician courses, photography and videography, computer hardware and DTP. So remember, these are the progress programs. So there are different categories in guise of agriculture programs, product programs and process programs. So what specifically we have seen is that though the intent was there from 1947 through the uh, five-year plans and later uh, the financial appropriation with respect to that, things have changed, the focus has been changed and it is changed for the betterment of the rural youth. Now, People who were not initially having a possibility of applying for a job, people who were not initially having the possibility of upgrading the skill of the particular individual or maybe the potentials within, they are finding it very useful. They are finding it very critical because there are, as we have seen in the RSETI also, there are different schemes with respect to product, with respect to process, with respect to agriculture, whereby they are getting trained. And once you are trained, finding an employment is relatively easy because there are n number of opportunities that are lying ahead. So initially, the, the training or the skill development, the skilling was a bottleneck. Now it is no more. Now it is no more. And the, the rural youth has been empowered much similar to the urban youth whereby they can skill develop, they can develop themselves, they can upskill themselves and they can find their own required niche or job. And the job is there. Only thing was that they had to find it out. They are getting the right platform. They are getting the right skill to upgrade themselves. That's all from today's class. See you in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.